What is up everybody? My name is Halo. Welcome to this video on SJF non preemptive. So SJF means shortest job first. It's a CPU scheduling algorithm which prioritizes the shortest job always. Now job obviously means process. Okay. The shortest means the one with the least burst time. Okay. So the rules is very, very simple. We can break this down into two parts. SJF meaning obviously always prioritize the process with the shortest burst time. The non preemptive part means once a process starts being executed, it should not be interrupted till the process is completed, which means if a process starts, if process starts, even if we get a process with a lower burst time, we should not interrupt the algorithm, we should not interrupt the process and the current process which is being serviced should be uh, serviced to its completion. Okay, that is the two things that we need to be seeing in this algorithm. So we can just break this down into non preemptive and SJF non preemptive always means the process should not be interrupted once it starts. Okay, so let's take an example here uh, of we have five process here. Uh, let's just uh, see how this goes. Okay. At t is equal to 0, we have one process arriving, p4, uh, and its burst time is 3. There's no other process. So arrival process will be p4. So obviously, the CPU cannot be idle when there's a process available. So p4 will be executed. And since this is non-preemptive, p4 should not be interrupted till it completes. So p4 will be throughout its completion. So that's 3, current time plus 3. So t is equal to 3. Until p4 completes, p4 will be there. Okay. Now, at t is equal to 3, what will be the available process? Let's see, P4 already completed. Uh, so we'll say P4 is completed. P3 arrives at T is equal to 1. P1 arrives at T is equal to 2. So the processes now will be P3 and P2. Okay. So now is where this algorithm comes into place because the ne next process which is going to be executed, we get to decide how the process with the lowest burst time. So that means P3 has a burst time of 8. Okay. P2 has a burst, sorry, not P2, sorry, uh, P1. What is the burst time of P1? P1 will have a burst time of 6, which means P1 is the process which has the lowest burst time. So the next process to execute will be P1 and it will be executed until its completion. So that will be 3 plus 6 until 9. So which means P1 is also done. Now at time is equal to 9. What are the processes that are available? We have to see that now. Okay. So we have uh, all the processes have now come. We have P3 obviously from before and we have P5 and now we have P2 as well. Now we have to see which process has the lowest burst time. This burst time is 2, this 4 and this has 8. So P2 will be the process with the lowest burst time. So the next process will be P2 until its completion at 11. Now, at t is equal to 11, obviously p2 will also be completed. We have two available processes and the process with the lowest burst time will be p5. So, p5 will be there until 6, 15. So, uh, 11 plus 4 until 50, t is equal to 15. So, t is equal to 15, if you see, there will be only one process remaining and that process will be p3, obviously. There is no other option. So, we go ahead with p3 until its completion, which is 15 plus 8, 23. So, this is how this algorithm works, okay? So let's just go ahead and calculate the completion time, turnaround time and the waiting time. Uh, so CT, CT and WT followed with the process P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5. Okay. So let's just check the uh, CT, w, TT and WT for a random process. Let's just take P2 here. P2 completes in time 11. Okay. The turnaround time is given by the completion time minus the arrival time. The arrival time is 5. So the uh, turnaround time will be 6, 11 minus 5. The waiting time is given by the turnaround time minus the burst time. The burst time is 2. So the waiting time is 4. I think this using this formula, I think you can go ahead and fill the rest. Uh, so we can move on to the code now. Right. So I have Visual Studio code open. Uh, we're going to be, I've created a file called SJF. We're going to be looking at the SJF non-preemptive version of the algorithm. Right. So how are we going to do this? First of all, let's just define a function called SJF, which takes in a process list as its input. Okay. So obviously we need to declare a process list so that, you know, I always work with the input being ready so that it's, it's better for us to troubleshoot in case we get any errors. So let's just create a process list. Okay. So what is a process list? If you guys are, this is the first video you're watching. A process list is a nested list contains 
of all the processes okay what is a process a process is a list this list should be in this particular format this is the most optimal format in terms of easy uh, code okay so a process should be in this particular order arrival time and the pid okay so process should have the burst time arrival time and its pid in this case for example we have uh, p1 for example the burst time is 6 arrival time is 2 process id is p1 so this process will be represented by 6 arrival time 2 and then followed by p1 okay i'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of the process in the same order we'll meet then right i've gone ahead and filled the rest of it in this particular order you guys can go and check it it's right and let me know uh, so yeah once this is done we can go ahead and call the sjf algorithm on this process list once this is done obviously this won't give anything right now because it's just a pass statement so let's just work on this algorithm right now see first things first we need to a uh, few things to keep track of everything so number one we need time because we look at uh, t is equal to zero t is equal to uh, three nine everything so we need a t value right followed by a gantt chart right the gantt chart will be this process order and then followed by the completed dictionary i'll tell you why this is a dictionary which is this particular table uh, this will be the key value followed by this will be in a list okay so this will be the key and this will be the value for each okay so that for that we need this completed dictionary okay now let us iterate this algorithm until the process list is empty what does that mean is once we complete a process uh, service we will remove that we'll pop that from the list okay from the list of processes so when the list of process is empty that means there is no process to be executed now everything is empty our uh, algorithm has completed okay so first of all let us go ahead and create an empty list called available this will keep track of what processes are available at that particular time instant. I think if we go ahead and rewind the video a bit, you can see at t is equal to uh, 0, we only have p4. So we are not even checking which has the lowest burst time. We are only checking the lowest burst time of the available processes. So first of all, we need to find the available process. How do you do that? Create an empty uh, list and iterate through all the process in the process list. Now, arrival time is given by p of 1. If p of 1 is lesser than or equal to the current time we can go ahead and add that to the available list so this will give you a list of the available process process obviously being a, a nested uh, list okay so this will be a process okay so now we have to look at a boundary condition what if there are no process available at that particular time instant or what if the available list is empty which means no processes available what do you do then okay simple we just in include the time by one we go to the next second or millisecond or whatever the time interval is and we just say that the cpu was idle in this particular second or in this particular time interval that is it we go ahead and continue with the algorithm else what do we do what do we do is very very simple we go ahead and sort this available just sort why do we need to sort it this is why I told you to keep a process in this particular format because if we just call the python's uh, inbuilt sort function we can say that it will sort with burst time first then arrival time and then pre id that is how it is supposed to be in sjf so it will always look at the shortest burst time process which is the shortest job so if we just go ahead and say available of uh, zero that will be the process with the lowest burst time in case two process have the same burst time we'll prioritize the process with the lowest arrival time that's how python works and this is why you need to have it in this particular format okay once that's done we have the process which is going to be serviced how do you service this process now let us service the process how do you do that number one we have to add the burst time and let me just go ahead and uh, process of sorry process zero will be the burst time PDA will be process of uh, 2, correct? And then the arrival time will be process of 1, okay? That is how this works. So, we know all of this. Okay. How do you do? See, current time should be increased by the burst time so that the process is serviced. And then let's go ahead and uh, add this particular PID to the Gantt chart. Okay. This is also done. What do we need now? We need the CT, TT and the WT. CT is given by the current time. Yes. After the process is completed okay tt is given by current time minus sorry completed time minus arrival time okay that is also done wt is what arrival sorry tt minus burst time 
that is also done okay so what do we do now we go ahead and create a, uh, an entry in the completed uh, dictionary for ct tt and wt as we said over here so with this i think this algorithm is completed we just go ahead and print the gantt chart and we'll go ahead and print the completed dictionary to see what this outcome is for this particular uh, set of process okay so as you can see there is an infinite loop here which means we did not go ahead and uh, we did not uh, clear some condition here okay i think i got it when we are servicing the process we are just adding all of this but we are not removing the process from the process list which means this will keep on going because this loop will only terminate when the process list is empty so let us go ahead once we do all of this let us go ahead and remove our process from the process list now if we run this let me just go ahead and clear the terminal so you guys can see it a bit better okay p4 p1 p2 p5 p3 p4 p1 p2 p5 p3 which means the gantt chart is correct let us go ahead and check for this particular value p2 has a completion time of 11 6 4 waiting time we can go ahead and say p2 11 6 4 which means this algorithm for F, uh, sjf non preemptive is right if you guys want to go ahead and print this a bit better you can iterate over this dictionary or if you want to add start time and end time for every process that can also be done those are very simple statements for just declare a dictionary or a list creating the start and end time of everything and uh, that's it this is the major part of how this uh, algorithm works my recommendation is to watch this video uh, and then do it on your own because it's very very straightforward if you want the code for reference it'll be down in the github uh, uh, repository the link for the repository will be down in the description i hope this video helped you thank you so much for watching if you if this video helped you hit the like button i'll see you in the next video until then bye